We now come to Wednesday, April 1st, 8033, on this journey through the last week of Jesus' life. As Jesus is teaching his disciples, going about his business, another story is taking place inside the walls of Jerusalem. The members of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious body, are having their own intense internal deliberations about how to get rid of him once and for all. Now, it's easy to read this very simplistically and to forget that these are real, living human beings, not just these two-dimensional characters. So our understanding of the storyline of this final week will grow as we begin to explore who these Jewish leaders were, what they were seeking to accomplish, what their motivations were, and why they found Jesus Christ to be so threatening and so frustrating to their religion and to their way of life. It seems that many of Jesus' opponents who are in the Sanhedrin or the Sanhedrin, this is a council of the Jews, the ruling council, you might say. There were 71 members. This idea of the 70 probably began even with Moses in the Old Testament where uh, he was uh, appointing 70 sub-elders to kind of organize the government for the Israelites as they're wandering through the desert. And this number 70 is always stuck so that the leading council of the Jews, uh, perhaps very aristocratically composed, uh, was the Sanhedrin. It had both Pharisees and Sadducees inside it. And the leader, of course, is the high priest himself. In Jesus' case, it would be Joseph Caiaphas. Often the Sanhedrin would meet about once a month in Jerusalem, and of course there were special high holy reasons for them to come together, especially during the Passover festival. Whenever voting took place in some major issue in the Sanhedrin, it's very interesting, they always let the youngest member vote first so that he is not simply overawed by the elders. And then the final decision is made, of course, by the older and older and more mature people and the high priest last of all. During Holy Week, it is the Sanhedrin that is in charge making plans as to what to do about this so-called messianic troublemaker. Well, we have to understand that the anger of the Jewish leaders was not restricted to Passion Week. The anger of the Jewish leaders began from the very start of Jesus' ministry. In actuality, they were plotting to kill him in Mark chapter 3, verse 6, right from the beginning. The Pharisees were those who had developed what we call the oral Torah, the oral tradition. And they believed the Torah went back to Moses. That is not just the written Torah and the Pentateuch, but the oral Torah, the traditions that they had developed over the last hundred years to tell the Jewish people how to live in accordance with the law. Jesus then challenged their very authority and challenged all of their teaching. By the time Christ came that final time to Jerusalem, the Jewish leaders had been opposing him for over two years because they believed that as long as there was blasphemy in the land, the true Messiah could not come. Jesus declared himself not just to be Messiah, but Son of God. And so each step, it became more intense. And by the time they were getting close to Passover, they felt that if they did not arrest Jesus and have him killed, that indeed a messianic riot would take place and the Romans would destroy the nation. 